If you have PCOS and you have heard about the supplement called Inositol, but you are wondering if it's going to be good for you and it's going to have any benefits, stay tuned because today we're going to be talking about Myo Inositol for PCOS and we're going to be going through everything that you need to know. So we're going to start with what is Inositol, then we're going to go through what is Myo and d Inositol and their role in your body. We're going to go through choosing the correct Inositol supplements and how to do it. We're going to talk about fertility and myoinositol. Then we're going to go through how long do you have to take inositol to start seeing the results. We're going to briefly touch on side effects. We're going to discuss how to take it best and mention other health benefits of inositol apart from PCOS. I have a little guest today. Hi, Karma. This is Karma, my cat, and she's going to be with us while we're talking about inositol. So you might be wondering what is inositol and we are going to start from that. So inositol is actually a type of carbohydrate, but it's not the type that is going to ruin your diet. It's actually the type that is naturally in your body. So as I said, inositol actually naturally is produced by our body and promotes healthy self growth and function. Another interesting fact is that sometimes it is referred to as vitamin B8 but it's actually not a vitamin anymore because our bodies can naturally produce it and therefore it lost the name of vitamin. So what else do we need to know about inositol in general? It is actually quite common in the foods that we eat. You will find it in a lot of normal food sources, like for example from fruits it will be oranges or cantaloupes. Whole grains and beans also have a good amount and if you're a meat eater there's quite a fair amount in meat as well. Especially if you don't mind eating liver, this will be a really good source of inositol. So you might be wondering if it's quite abundant in fruits and vegetables and beans and legumes and meat, uh, why do we still need to supplement with it? Well, for us, especially with PCOS, we sometimes might need a little bit of boost, even though our body can produce it naturally. And we might just need a little bit more to help with our cell function because our cells are not working properly. So now let's talk about two types of inositol, myoinositol and d -chiroinositol. So both of those have very important role in insulin signaling, which if you are living with PCOS or insulin resistance, you know how important that is. So myo and d -chiroinositol, even though they're both types of inositol, have slightly different roles in our body. Myoinositol is really good at promoting glucose absorption. It helps your body get the glucose from the food you eat. So basically utilize the glucose that you eat. Besides that, it has another important role and it helps transporting glucose to the different parts of your body, to different cells. So apart from that, myoinositol activates glucose transporters that helps move glucose in your body. So now moving to d -chiroinositol. its role is more glycogen production and storage. Think about it like your body saving the, the glucose and the energy for later for when it might actually need it. Now let's talk about how does this relate to PCOS. So it was back in late 80s when researchers started to look into myo and d inositol and its role in PCOS and its role in insulin resistance slash insulin sensitivity. So here is what they found. If it goes to myo inositol, it is a quite a big player <laughs> in glucose absorption, but also production of FSH which is follicle stimulating hormone. On the other side, d is all about the glucose storage and it's about androgens and how they're being created in our body. And as we know, excessive androgens can be problematic in PCOS and cause things like acne, uh, hirsutism, hair loss, etc. For the majority of women, most of inositol in the ovaries is myoinositol and d is just a small fraction. But here's an important information. Every cell of the body holds the different ratio of those inositols. So in women with PCOS, there is a deficit of myoinositol in the ovaries, and this can throw off the signaling of FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. So the hormone that is responsible for follicle stimulation, which means uh, ovulation. The researchers have also found that some of myoinositol can be turned into d inositol as well. But whether we can change it so well, it's unknown. So when it comes to choosing one over the other, 
there is no choice. They have to work together to help us get all of the results that we want in our body. So let's start with point number three, how to choose your inositol supplement. Now you might have heard about the, the magic ratio <laughs> of Mayo to D-Cairo inositol, which is 40 to one. So let's talk about it a little bit and why that is. So essentially the ratio of 40 to one Mayo to D-Cairo inositol is mirroring what naturally happens in the body. So this is the natural ratio that we normally have and therefore the supplements with that ratio are the best for our body. So as I mentioned before, having both of those inositols in correct ratios can help you with stuff like glucose absorption from food, moving glucose around your body and also, you know, androgen and FSH management and secretion. So when you are searching for the perfect supplement, search for this magic golden ratio of 40 to 1, again, Mayo inositol, D-Cairo inositol, and that will give you the best results. Now, there are other scientific studies that actually uh, combined inositol with folic acid, and that had very good results as well. So supplementing additionally apart from inositols with folic acid will definitely not hurt. So I want to talk about myo-inositol and fertility and specifically egg quality. So this topic is especially significant for all the women who are trying to conceive and are trying to make sure that their egg quality is the highest as it can possibly be. So there, there have been a research conducted that actually shown that myo-inositol can aid not only normal ovulation, but improve egg and then embryo quality. So this is quite an important information if you're thinking about your fertility and your options, etc. From my understanding, just from watching a lot of YouTube videos, if you have the better egg quality, you have better chances of conceiving and not having a miscarriage. So, for example, and this is again, this is just my understanding, if you have a poor egg quality and you end up getting pregnant, if there have been some you know, problems with the chromosomes, etc. there are higher chances of miscarriage. Similarly, if you have IVF and you have poor egg quality, not all the eggs might fertilize. Even if they fertilize, there might be some issues, they might not divide as fast as possible. There might be all sorts of array of issues that might influence the successful pregnancy. So how does that happen? Well, myoinositol is basically improving insulin sensitivity in the ovary and therefore facilitating the healthy ovulation that we very often don't have. And that's why we also have irregular periods, etc. if we have PCOS. So there has been a study and there is bigger and bigger practice to actually prescribing myoinositol for IVF cycles to improve egg quality and therefore success rates of IVF. Obviously, those are just a few studies that I have found, so don't take this as any conclusive proof. I'm just a girl on the internet reading articles, so make sure that you always ask your doctor for an advice. So now let's talk about how long do you have to take inositol for it to start working. So let's say you're just starting taking your Mayo to d inositol today, and when can you start seeing results? Well, I have seen a few articles, and it's very funny because everybody says something else about the results. Now, if it goes to fertility, results uh, I have found I think three articles and all of them quoted that minimum minimum three months is necessary of a daily supplementation to start seeing any results and one of them also quoted that is three to six in the past I have found the article that said that, that actually the best results are actually after eight to twelve months of supplementation so it might vary and our bodies are very very different we might have different levels of insulin resistance and we might have different levels and different issues that our body has to go through for this supplement to take effect now it's important to know that if main mechanism of action of inositol is making us more insulin sensitive you can also do other things to improve this, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Now, let's speak a little bit about side effects. If it goes to myoinositol and the thyroinositol, in general, they're quite safe supplements. There are some mild effects that are being seen and observed, and most of them are like very mild stuff like nausea, which of course, if you have it, doesn't feel mild, it feels awful. Uh, stomach ache, it can be diarrhea, bloating, gas, uh, all the like, intestinal side effects. In very rare cases, it has caused headaches or dizziness. So it's important to know in case you have any side effects, of course, consult your doctor and talk about whether you should be taking Mayo Inositol any longer. Now, how to take Mayo and d inositol 
It's important to actually follow the guidelines that you have on your supplement. I like having ready supplements, so I have a powder that is a mixture of uh, myo, dicaro, inositol, zinc, vitamin D and curcumin. And it's recommended to take two scoops a day. It's a powder form with the water, with the meal to improve absorption. A lot of times this is going to be the recommended dosage. Sometimes I have found that it's recommended to take it first thing in the morning. Sometimes it is recommended to take smaller dosage twice a day. However, just always follow whatever is written on the package. In my case, I think it's very important to take it with fatty meal because I have vitamin D in it as well, which might improve ingestion of vitamin D. Now let's talk about other health benefits. And this is actually very interesting because you might be wondering, well, am I, am I convinced about myo-inositol and d inositol You should be, uh, because you have a range of other health benefits as well. So one thing is actually improved mental function. So it is said that it can actually help with anxiety and depression. So for us, with PCOS, with all of those hormones running wild, it can be very, very useful, since it can contribute to mode balanced mood. Obviously, the second thing is insulin resistance, insulin sensitivity, since it sensitizes you to insulin. It is very good supplement if you're not considering it for fertility itself, just to manage your insulin resistance. Another thing is weight management, but that again, it's something that cascades from insulin resistance and insulin management. If you're gonna manage your insulin with help of myo-inositol, you might see the other effects like weight loss and healthy metabolic function. Another thing is skin health, and here I think d inositol kicks in a little bit uh, because it helps with insulin and insulin management is also connected to our androgens, as I mentioned before. It can help with acne, cystic acne, all sorts of hormonal acne that is caused by high androgens. And because of that, it might also have a slight effect on other stuff caused by androgens like hirsutism and hair loss. Inositol has also been tested for liver function help, so it might be protective to the liver in diseases like fatty liver disease, etc. Some studies have also shown that it can help you manage your cholesterol levels and the general lipids in your blood. And last but not least, it can improve your sleep quality, so it can give you better quality, longer sleep. And that has actually been tested also in pregnant women. Now, I want to talk a little bit about general insulin management. If you have been following my channel, if not, make sure you subscribe. I have been talking a lot about insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. So because myo-inositol and dicaro-inositol work on those insulin receptors on our blood sugars, etc., there are other actions that you might take to help with your insulin regulation, with your insulin resistance, insulin sensitivity, etc. So one of those things is, of course, diet. All the foods that include a lot of starches or sugars are going to spike your insulin and might in turn make you more insulin resistant. So lowering the glycemic index in your body by following low carb diet or like myself keto diet can be very beneficial another thing that you can do is exercise and exercise actually sensitizes us to insulin as well one of the types of exercise I would recommend for everybody is walking if you can do at least 5,000 steps preferably 10,000 steps a day. That would be perfect. You don't have to go fast. The other proven very good PCOS exercise is slow weight lifting. So basically doing strength exercises, either using some sort of weight or your own body weight, but doing them very slowly. But again, if you have insulin resistance, make sure that you talk to your health provider. You might need a different types of management, including specific medication, supplementation, exercise, diet plan that is catered specifically to you. Now, that is it. I hope I answered all your questions about the inositol. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments and make sure you like that video, subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified about my future videos. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye.